as we look at these things, there is the prayer of thanks there that is at the beginning. There is a lot of text there that we had to read to get in here to this, uh, uh, kind of into the meat of these things. Uh, but going back into verse 17, it says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. Now, just because we are saved, we can all say that we know who God is. If you are a born again believer, you can know who God is. As you said through revival this week, you can understand that uh, God is revealed from heaven and to all men, uh, whether, they be, uh, whether they be saved, whether they be lost, I want you to, to have the understanding that God has revealed himself into all men through his creation, through all the things God is being revealed, but understand that may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. Just because you are saved, that does not mean that you know him. Understand that we know God the Father if we are saved, but just because we're saved, that don't mean we have that intimate relationship that we know Him, that we can feel His presence, uh, that you can, uh, uh, you know, you, Lucas was talking about the bonds of a family. The bonds of a family are unique because me and Jamie have kind of this weird bond. Sometimes we may not like each other, but that's just because we're brothers and sisters. So understand it's okay if you sometimes don't like the people in the church, but understand we still love each other. But we have this uncanny ability for Jamie to say, hey, Bubba, do you remember that song we listened to that one time at that one place? And I can say, yes, I do. I remember that song, and I can begin to sing it, and then we can sing it together. And all she has to say is something weird and crazy and stupid like that, and I can know it. I have a knowledge of her I, when she walks in the room I can tell you whether she's in a good mood whether she's in a bad mood there's just these things that you begin to know when you live with somebody just as many whenever I come into the uh, from work of the evening she can look at me she knows whether or not she wants to speak amen and I can tell by reading her text messages what kind of mood she's in we have a knowledge that's because there is an intimacy in the relationship that is there. There is a desire. Either that or you've spent so much time together that you know one another. Now I understand that just being saved this morning that you know who God is. Well my challenge to you on this day, on this resurrection morning, is for you to come into the knowledge of wisdom and know who your God is. Know exactly who your God is because I want you to understand it says the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know I think I'm going to have a stroke this morning. Whew. That you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. It's one thing. You know, I believe it's over in the book of uh, First or Second Peter 1 that you would be able to stand and give reason to the hope that lies within you and to any man at any time, no matter who it is that asks you these things. The Bible says that we should be able to give them that hope. And right here it says, The, eye, your, the eyes of, of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling. Do you know what your hope is? We know one of my new favorite songs that comes on Christian radio is by Crowder. And uh, I can't think of that other guy's name. He sings in it. Me and Jaylee singing. And uh, uh, we just ain't got the, uh, the, the soul and the rhythm to sing this song, if you understand what I'm saying. But it's called All My Hope is in Jesus. That's the name of the song. And as you read it, if you really know who Christ is, you know where your hope is. You know what your hope is. As you sit here... How many of you watch the forecast all week to see if it's going to rain on Easter? Don't act like you didn't. Everybody here want to know if it's going to rain on Easter? As you watched it, did you know that you had the power within you? Understand this. Understand what I'm about to tell you. You had the power within you that controls the weather. God spoke unto the sea in the storm and it stopped. You understand that the spirit of Christ lies within you. And you understand if you wanted a dry Easter, you had that power. You look at me like I'm crazy this morning. Don't tell me God don't control the weather. Don't tell me he don't live within you. You have faith in believing in what you are praying. And friend, it wouldn't be wet. 
Now, that's just fact. You don't have to like that this morning, but that's God's word. You ask in faith, and you believe in what you ask. Stay with me. That the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, and what the riches and the glory of his inheritance in the saints. You know what some of the benefits of being a child of God is? Friend, you ain't got to be afraid. You ain't got to be afraid of nothing. You want to know what some of the riches and being a part of that glory is? Hey, I have no glory in myself. I have no righteousness in myself. But I want you to understand something. I have Christ within me, and friend, that's all I need. Christ being within me takes me all the way into the portals of heaven so that when I pray, God hears my voice. Having Christ within me allows God, when he looks upon me, not to see the the, the black, the evil, the sinful man that is here, but he can see the blood of Christ. Amen. So listen, Radio on White Church this morning. And it's talking about how you never know when today will be the last day that's normal. That's kind of confusing. But if tomorrow something happens and I'm paralyzed from the waist down, I did not know that today was my last day of normal. Not many people have that heads up, you know, that phone call that says, hey, uh, your life is going to change tomorrow, so if you don't mind, you better live up today. If everybody in here knew when the last day you would spend with your spouse or with your child was, I dare say you'd make the most of it. You never know when the last day of normal will be. But what difference does it make if you know Jesus? There is nothing, understand, there is nothing, and I'm going to say that one more time, there is nothing that Christ has not already defeated. There is nothing that can stop Christ. You and I, when our heart quits beating... When our body becomes stiff and our eyes no longer open, I want you to understand there's nothing more that body can do. We are done. But not Christ. He was in the same shape. He lay dead for three days. He was in the, 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 the heart of the earth for three days and for three nights. And I want you to understand that still couldn't stop him. So what do we think? What is the reason of our hope? Our hope is Christ. All that we have is Christ. All that we're ever going to have is Christ. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe? Wait. Wait, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe? According to the working of his mighty power. Do you understand what we just got told? It took great power to raise Lazarus from the dead. It took great power to cause the lame men to walk. It took great power to say, peace, be still, speaking to the wind. It took great power for for, uh, the the, the stone to be rolled away and for Christ to be risen again in a living, understand this, in a living body. Because uh, they begin to say, oh, it's a spirit. And he said, well, give me some food. Does a spirit eat? I want you to understand that his body and soul all were reunited as one that took great power friend how many things do you give life to some of us can't even plant a flower give it water and cause it to live we can mess that part up friend we don't have nothing we ain't got no power we have nothing to bring to the table to to give us any kind of glory other than our sins that's the only thing that we can bring uh, to, to have salvation because we have to be sinners and that's all we got 
And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe? That meaning believers, all of you who believe have the same power. You know how we know that? It says, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. That's where Christ is, amen? The right hand of the Father. Amen. Is that the only place he is? If you believe that's the only place he is, then friend, you have no power. You got nothing. In all honesty, if that's where you only think he is, you really ain't got much hope either. But stay with me here. Christ lives within you and I because that's what the Bible says. And I have yet to find any uh, falseness there within God's word. I've not found any of his promises that ain't true. Amen. So if his word said Christ lives within me, then friend, that resurrection power too flows within me. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Whew. I hope that's the air kicking on and not the heat. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. You know what sent Christ to the grave? What sent him into the tomb was our sins. That's what put him there. It wasn't, it, it wasn't Pilate. It wasn't the scribes. It wasn't the Pharisees. All these things that nailed him to the cross, all these things, uh, everything that put him there was your and I iniquity. That's the reason he was there. He died for our sins. He didn't die because of our sins. He died for them. Understand there is a difference in what you say. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Again, it's truth. And that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. And that after he was seen above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto the present, but some are fallen asleep. After that he was seen of James, then of all the apostles... And last of all, he was seen of me also as one born out of due time. This is Paul writing, For I am the least of the apostles, that I am not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. This is Paul's humbleness speaking here at the moment. He says, I'm a child of God. I'm apostle under the Gentiles, but I'm not worthy because I had a big part in the persecution of the church. Paul, also known as Saul in a book or so back before this, he was there whenever Stephen was stoned. I want you to understand that Saul was not a very good man, but I want you to understand that there was power that came into his life, there was power that came into his heart, and that power changed him. It was not of him, it wasn't of anything that he did because he's still the same guy. But he was enabled and enlightened by the power of God. Pay very close attention to what this says. Verse 10. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. Praise God. Hallelujah. You should be able to shout on that verse. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. I am a sinner saved by the grace of God. I am a sinner that is heir to the kingdom of heaven. I am a sinner because of him. I am what I am by the grace of God. Jesus made some very powerful statements. God made a very powerful statement and said, I am that I am. Paul here says, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. We ain't the great I am, but the great I am lives within. Amen? It's by his grace, friend. By his grace. By the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly 
than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was within me. All that you do for the kingdom of God, all that you do for the church, all that you do for this or for that, all that you do is nothing. But God that lies within you, Christ within you, is what enables you to do anything. As Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. Unless ye abide in me, you will not put forth any kind of fruit. So if it was not by the grace of God and in, in the righteousness of Christ that is put within you, friend, you have nothing. There is nothing that you have. You bring absolutely nothing other than yourself to the kingdom of God. Paul understands that. He says, I labored more abundantly than they all. He says, but it wasn't me. It was God's grace that was within me that labored. It was God's grace that enabled me to do these things. It was God's grace that gave me the ability. Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? We're going to do some skipping here for a moment. But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain and your faith is also vain. If on the third day was just any other first day of the week, I've said it multiple times the last few days, you and I was wasting our time meeting here this morning. If Christ stayed in the tomb, then why are we here? Because there is no hope within. There is no power within. If Christ couldn't make it out of the tomb, then friend, he ain't got the power to, to uh, deliver me and you from anything. If he didn't. But remember how we started that the non-believer said, do you remember how that guy said on the third day I'll be risen again? I want you to understand just as we talked this morning, oftentimes it's the lost people who remind you of God. Because they say, well, don't you have a God? Don't you pray? I'm a born again believer this morning. I've been saved by the grace of God. And in order for me to be saved, I had to believe in the, that, that Christ came and he was born of a virgin. That he was born into this world and that he was a man. I had to believe that he died for my sins. I had to believe that he hung on a cross of Calvary and he bore all my sin and iniquity for me. And I had to believe that on the third and appointed day that he rose again from the grave. Those are your components. I had to believe those things. So if I believe that Christ was resurrected, then I believe also in the resurrection power. So if I believe that God is powerful. And I believe what Jesus said in the latter parts of Matthew there toward the end of the chapter, that all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. If I believe those things, then I also believe that that same power lies within me. I believe the same power lies within each and every believer within this church. So I want you to understand what it is that I'm about to tell you. If we believe these things then at no point whatsoever is it acceptable for a Christian person to hang their head and be discouraged if we believe all those things. Because if God has all that power and we believe that power and it saved our soul, then friend, what do you have the uh, 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 reasoning to doubt one iota of anything? What do we have to fear? 
But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to understand one of the very most important promises to a believer that is attempting to walk a Christian life. You, read this verse, but thanks be to God which giveth us the victory. You want to win? Nobody plays a game because they like losing. All right, I understand that. Ain't nobody here enjoys losing. You don't believe me? You play a game with me and Mindy. We don't like to lose at all. My kids, my nephews, they don't like to lose. I dare say that not one person here enjoys losing. When we first started learning to play cards, if you're a whole, you're a card player. You do not play cards for fun. You play cards to win. That was the rule before you sat down at the table. If you were going to play, you play to win. I want you to understand, Christian, you didn't become a Christian to be a loser. I want you to understand if you desire to play to win, then, friend, you got to play through Christ because you can't do it. But thanks be to God that giveth us the victory. Friend, you have the victory. You have already overcome whatever it is you desire to overcome if you rely on Christ. There is an if, but he giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, because, friend, Christ rose again. Whew. So on this resurrection morning that we are gathered together in God's house. On this Sunday, this April Fool's Day, friend, salvation is no joke. God's might and His power and His ability is no joke. It's not a laughing matter. But he has given us the victory through his son. For, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. I'm a sinner saved by grace. I'm a sinner saved by grace that God has appointed to stand in one of his pulpits or one of his churches. By the grace of God, I am what I am. By the grace of God, friend, you are what you are. Do you understand that when Christ hung upon the Calvary's tree, when he was nailed to the cross, he didn't die for who he wanted you to be. He didn't die for that person that 15 years after they got saved would finally get serious and begin to study the Word of God. He didn't die for that person. He died for the vile sinner that you was at the time. By the grace of God, I am what I am. I am. 